Welcome everyone. This is Dr. Clark from the Center for Weight Loss Success. On this podcast of Doc Weight Loss, I'm going to talk a little bit about iodine and bromine and the health connection that they have. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Again, this is Dr. Clark and today on the podcast, I'm going to talk a little bit about about iodine as well as bromine. Iodine and bromine, they're, if you look at the periodic table of elements, there's a, uh, they're both halides. Okay, so they're very similar in nature. So that iodine can have tremendous health benefits, whereas bromine potentially is a toxin. And so subsequently, let's talk a little bit about that relationship and could it be causing some problems and what we can actually do about it. So iodine is extremely important in our bodies. Basically, we cannot survive without it. Every single cell in our body has iodine receptors on it. So we need it. Your thyroid gland itself um, requires about three milligrams of thyroid, excuse me, of iodine every single day now for it to function. And then uh, there's also the breast tissue that has many receptors of iodine on it. So subsequently that any place there are receptors, typically it's going to need it. The receptors are there for a reason. Now, what's interesting with uh, iodine, iodine used to be one of the uh, things that we use for to treat all kinds of different things. It's kind of what I'll call as lost traditional medicine because it's absolutely an essential micronutrient that's getting used by every single cell in the body, but it used to be used for many different problems. And this was especially true, you know, a hundred years ago when there weren't all kinds of different medications, antibiotics, different drugs. So iodine was used for all kinds of things. It was used to treat goiters, it was used to treat infections as one of the best antibiotics and we still use iodine to clean the skin okay? um, it helped prevent fibroids or treated fibroids it helped treat uh, prostatic hypertrophy um, cold uh, upper respiratory infections it actually used to treat depression um, breast pain it actually works wonderfully for breast pain especially women that have fibrocystic breast tube breast tissue as well as kind of it's used to treat skin infection so it used in the past for lots of different things prior to we had all these other medications and uh, may, most of you may remember kind of gee my grandmother had this bottle of iodine and iodine drops that could be used as well as kind of put it on the skin you could use it to clean you could use it for just about anything um, so now what happened then though is that kind of in the late 40s early 50s they got this uh, theory out there that iodine too much iodine would cause goiters and where that came from is what when they found that there were areas of the country that had very very low iodine levels and very very low iodine levels then when they replaced the iodine there was some stimulation to the thyroid gland because finally the thyroid got to work the way it was supposed to the work it wasn't working at all and so when that when they got some stimulation to it the, the glands themselves swelled a little bit and it was very a temporary thing but they thought okay you know this is causing goiters but actually it was the iodine deficiency that actually was the problem so there's a lot of misinformation there and actually that stuck with us really till now I mean it's still out there is that many physicians feel that okay gee you shouldn't take extra iodine because potentially it'll cause a goiter well iodine does not cause goiters you know but if you look at what's the the RDA of iodine it's a literally a microscopic number they'll say like how many micrograms you should take and oh you shouldn't take on huge doses but Actually, your thyroid gland, again, requires about three milligrams of iodine every day. And unfortunately, we used to get iodine from a lot of our foods, but that isn't true anymore. Now, you can think of, well, there's iodine in salt. Okay, yeah, we have some iodine in salt. Unfortunately, the iodine that's extremely unstable. And most of us, when we buy iodine salt, we should buy the big, you know, big little canister there and we open it up. But once it's opened, actually iodine very unstable it actually vaporizes and it's slow it's slowly removed so after a couple of months basically the iodine is pretty much gone out of the iodized salt 
And so we're not really getting it from that. It also used to be in a lot of different foods, but it subsequently has been removed from foods. So almost no one in the U.S. gets enough iodine. So one of the things I encourage people to do and most people ought to do is actually add some extra iodine because iodine can be very helpful. Now, iodine deficiencies are also relatively common. Now, if someone has severe deficiency, especially if pregnant women have severe deficiency, the, the very high risk of, of having a, a baby that is, is mentally retarded. And that's one of the most used in the past, used to be one of the most common reasons for mental retardation is a iodine deficiency. And then there were areas of the, of the world that basically had very high iodine deficiency. They got iodine replaced and all of a sudden, hey, IQs went up significantly. So that's very real there. Um, it also kind of, you look at it from a breast cancer standpoint, you know, in Japan, breast, the risk of developing breast cancer is very low right? for, for women. In the U.S., it's almost one in seven. Yeah, which you know, an incredibly high number of women that could uh, develop breast cancer. But one of the potential reasons, I think it's very real reasons that Japanese women in Japan, okay, um, is because they take, get very high iodine amounts. And uh, each, uh, most, uh, the average Japanese woman gets in about 10 milligrams of iodine a day. And it's not because they're taking iodine supplements, it's because they get it from seaweed. Now, in the U.S., we don't eat much seaweed. So, I mean, but they're getting it from C then that's where, um, so therefore it looks like it's actually protecting the breast tissue there. So anyway, iodine can be extremely helpful for overall health. Now it's, you can't really measure iodine in your blood. So it's not like I'd say, okay, let's measure your iodine level because it's really the iodine in your tissues where it needs to be. So in order to get an idea, of, you know, what is your iodine? Are you really low or not? Is you'd have to do a, a urine collecting over 24 hours and measure how much iodine is in there and just see, you know, because typically you should have a certain amount in there if you're getting enough iodine and you'll actually kind of waste it. So um, that's one way to tell, hey, are you getting enough iodine and you could do this urinary collection, but it's a very complex thing and it's not that accurate. Since iodine, you'd have to take absolutely you're really you'd have to take monster doses to actually cause a problem is like well, i encourage most people ought to be on extra iodine now this is where bromine comes in okay now bromine kind of goes back the the two molecules look very similar now bromine is again it's a halide it's in the periodic table there it's in that same family okay but we can think of bromine really as being kind of a, an inhibitor of some of the use of, of iodine. Um, so it, what it does, it actually competes for the iodine receptor. And because of that, it can disrupt some of the uh, endocrine organs, specific, specifically the thyroid thing. So we can often think of, of if you want to label bromine as something, it's the bully of the halide group. And bromine, this uh, is a BR, you know, this, this, it's, it's a label on the periodic table there of elements from, is from you know, if you remember the, the, you know, the TV show Breaking Bad. That's the BR bromine. Okay. But it, what it does, it displaces then the cell receptors for iodine and it kind of gets stuck on these cell receptors. So now these cell receptors for iodine actually have this bromine stuck on it. And so you can get this over time, then you can actually get what's referred to as. Uh, are thought of as kind of as a bromine dominance is that the bromine actually kind of blocks all these iodine receptors and you can actually get some toxicity from it and as we see gee iodine levels have gone down we're taking in less iodine we actually see bromine levels have gone up and bromine again is potentially a toxin and actually in, in europe um, bromine is actually banned Okay, so you can't, you, know, you can't have bromine in, in a lot of things. And bromine, unfortunately, is found in all kinds of things here in the U.S. It's one of the main things that are used, uh, I mean, elements that are used in flame retardants. So anything that has kind of a flame retardant in it will actually very likely have bromine in it. And so, you know, if you think about the flame retardants, all children's clothing, children's bedding, a lot of, you know, curtains and everything, all these things that are flame retardant. 
it typically are impregnated with bromine. So it's kind of, then it will release into the air. We're exposed to it continuously. It's in some pesticides. It use, it's used in all kinds of baked goods. As in bake, it kind of gives it that stretchy. So we think, well, gee, the pizza man's stretchy. Now this is the, the what doughy kind of stretchy. It's the bromine in it that does that. And so it's added to a lot of uh, foods out there. Um, it's also added to many drinks. Okay, in the drinks uh, specifically, they're usually citrus drinks. So if you look at some of the citrus sodas out there, and some of the Gatorade, the power of these things that are citrus drinks, and you'll see it labeled as BVO. BVO is brominated vegetable oil. It's what helps keep everything in intact instead of separating out. And so you get and this mainly used in citrus drinks. So if you see that on the label of citrus drink, that's brominated with BVO. Right. Um, so it's also, so we're exposed to this all the time. And so then this bromine can actually get stuck on the iodine receptors. And so it's kind of throughout our tissue. Now, what you need to do then is you need to get rid of those, the bromine and get the iodine on the iodine receptors. All right. So a good way to do that though is, okay, start taking iodine. And you take iodine then and subsequently it's going to displace the bromine over time but it does take some time too and now one of the potential problems there is that once we start taking iodine okay um, if you have a lot of bromine that's blocking the receptors now that bromine is going to be released into their system and bromine is somewhat of a toxin and so what people tend to notice if they have significant bromine toxicity, is that they start taking iodine, they start to getting some side effects. And people often think, gee, it's the iodine causing the side effect. But it's actually not. The iodine is not really causing the side effect, it's the bromine that's being displaced. And it may take some time to completely displace that and get rid of it. It may take a good month or so. Um, and so what does it cause that when you get this bromine toxicity and the bromine released again into your system, well, you can get some, you get a little bit of sedative effects. It's like, gee, I can't think clearly. I'm tired. I'm fatigued. Um, I just kind of feel out of sorts. I'm kind of in a bad mood. Some people may notice actually a little metallic taste in their mouth. Um, again, fatigue is one of the big, one, uh, big ones there. You may feel like, gee, I'm not remembering things. I'm getting headaches. Okay? Uh, some people actually get some what I'll call weird symptoms in that it's like, gee, I get a runny nose and I get uh, sneezing for no reason. So I, I just sneeze for some reason. And this may be that getting releasing the bromine and you're getting rid of it, but you need to kind of get the iodine in and displace that. It's not the iodine causing the problems, it's more, it's the bromine. So kind of the, there is a significant health connection um, between the kind of the, the bromine and the iodine. The iodine, a lot of good health protection. The bromine, not so much. And so subsequently we want to get rid of the bromine. Unfortunately, again, it's used in all kinds of things here in the U.S. Again, in Europe, it's banned. Um, so it is something that uh, we uh, potentially should, you should be concerned with. So just about everybody. I recommend get iodine and it's kind of as a normal dose. Okay, a normal dose of iodine kind of daily is about 12 and a half milligrams. They're little, little tablets. Um, that's what I encourage most people to start at. If you have significant bromine kind of, uh, if you want to say bromine toxicity, if you notice these symptoms, you really may want to take actually high doses. So you can kind of slowly work your way up. I wouldn't start at 50 milligrams, but use these 12 and a half milligram tablets. You can make it four of them a day. Um, but you want to start a little slowly for the first week or two, just take the 12 and a half, and then want to increase that. If you get significant symptoms from the bromine, that potentially you want to may want to stop the iodine for a couple of days. You could use it with some bouillon and broth because the sodium chloride, chloride is also a halide, will help get rid of the symptoms. And then you can restart kind of the, the iodine again. And you're going to slowly wash out this bromine and subsequently then kind of fill the, the cell receptors with the iodine. Again, we, your thyroid needs the iodine. And it's going to be very protective. The rest of our body, especially breast tissue for women, and then just every single requires iodine. All right, so kind of a, a lot of information there talking about iodine, bromine, 
Um, iodine is not a bad thing to add to your supplemental regimen. If, if you think it's not a bad thing, I take it daily. Um, and so if you want more information about all this, I encourage you to go to our corporate website, as, uh, which is cfwls.com. If you want more access to these discussions, every week I do a live webinar. You can sign up for that, our Losing Weight USA, which is www.losingweightusa.com. Sign up. You'll have access to me as well every week. Um, live, you can interact and ask questions as well as you get, we have a tips handout and recipes each week, um, which will kind of keep you entertained, so to speak. All right, so thank you all for listening, and remember, it's your life. Make it a healthy one. Have a good day, everyone. Take care.